Good morning, everyone. My name is Matt Keyes, and I'm the Minister of Technical Arts here at Our Savior. I want to welcome all those gathered in person here at our Tacoma campus, as well as those joining us online. We invite everyone to complete a connection card by either using your phone to scan the QR code that you see on your screen, or by going to go.oslc.com cc. If you're in person, you can grab a connection card from the pew in front of you, fill it out and put it in the giving boxes in the back as you leave worship today. If this is your first time worshiping with us today, let us know on your connection card or stop by the connection counter in the lobby after worship because we have a gift for you. Here's what's happening in OSLC Life. The fall school year is closer than you think, and every August, the Back to School Fair provides a full backpack of school supplies and a winter coat to local students. Together, we can help kids in our community get a jump start on a great year, and you can help. Beginning July 10th, that's today, we will be collecting school supplies for the Back to School Fair, and you can drop off all donations in the marked bins at church. Cash donations are also welcome, as we are able to buy some supplies in bulk and stretch those dollars even further. We are also going to need volunteers to help share those backpacks with our neighbors and be part of the fun. So stay tuned for more information on how you can help in August. Thank you so much for your support and care for families and students in our community. As we get ready to enter into our time of worship, I want to let you know that if you want more information on all the exciting ministries happening here at Our Savior, check out the central hub at OSLC.com or download the OSLC app at OSLC.com slash app. All right, let's stand wherever we are as we come into God's presence and begin our time of worship. Thanks, Matt. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you on this July 10th. How's the summer? Going okay? Yeah, liking the warm weather? Yeah, yeah, we're good. All right, sweet. And uh, I want to welcome those who are joining us online. Good morning to everyone. Say hi to each other in the chat. And uh, we're starting a new uh, sermon series today on family and... um, As we do that, we begin our time together in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's worship our God who lifts us up to where he is, calls us heirs of the heavenly kingdom. Let's sing this together. Here we go.
Hey, good morning, church. Hey, good morning. It's good to be here. I'm Pastor Tim. And if you're new here, can't wait to meet you. I'll be hanging out there in the lobby after the service. So come by and say hey. All right. Hey, let's remember what God has done for us in Jesus. So let's bow our heads as we prepare our hearts to receive this meal that we call communion. And uh, we pray, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, uh, indeed, you have done great things for us. Uh, the greatest thing, you have, you have forgiven us of all of our sin. Um, you have you brought us back together um, after being separated from you. And you give us the promise of, of life everlasting, a uh, life that has no end, a life with you. And so right now as we, we even celebrate that uh, in this meal, we're reminded that your body was broken, your blood was shed for us. So all that could be ours. And we just admit that, that we haven't honored that. We haven't, um, we have not loved others like you love us, even as we love ourselves. And so we confess our thoughts, our words, our actions this morning, just collectively, silently, personally. And if the Holy Spirit does bring anything to mind, Lord, we place it into your hands, trusting you indeed even forgive that. Great news is that Almighty God, and He is Almighty, has given Jesus his son to die for us. And for his sake, he forgives us all of our sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of his Holy Spirit. To that, we can all say, amen. amen. Because we're children of God, he gives us this meal, and the invitation is this, that Jesus, the night he was betrayed, he took bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and he said, take and eat, this is my body that's given for you. Do this to remember me. And then after supper, Jesus, he took the cup, and after he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink of it, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood given for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. So do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. You go and be seated. You know, we have the opportunity to come forward to receive communion today. We'll have four different stations. As you come up, all of our bread is gluten-free, so you can hold out your hand to receive that piece of bread. We do have kits if you would like to commune by individual kit as well. And then the second person will have a tray. The outer ring of darker color cups is alcoholic wine. The inner ring of lighter color cups is non-alcoholic grape juice. And you can choose how you'd like to consume the blood of Christ here today, and you can drop your empty cups in one of the baskets on your way back to where you're seated. If you're home or wherever you are, this is a time of communion. It's a time of worship. So uh, my prayer is that this is an enriching time for you as well, that you get to participate in this as the Holy Spirit leads you. was lost I walked away The road was dark I could not see My hope was gone The pain was real But your mercy You saw my stars shame 
God's mercy and grace is completely and totally yours today. As evidenced what he did on the cross. And as we talk about the joys and struggles of family, right? Because there are both, right? Anybody have joys and struggles with family out there? Yeah, right? And we know that God has given us our families for support to remind us also of how much we need to rely on him at times when family relationships are, are difficult. And this morning, we're gonna teach you a new song. Um, you'll, you've probably heard this verse, right? Joshua 24, 15, that says, but as for me and my house, we will what? Serve the Lord, right? And before that, as he's talking, they've come into Canaan and, and, and Joshua has led them and he's telling them, choose you this day who you will serve. And as we think about this, this idea of serving the Lord together as a family, it's not only a, a confirmation of his faithfulness and his, and his promise, because we've seen what God has done, right? Throughout history and what God is doing now. It's also a call on us as mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, grandmas and grandpas, to lead by example wherever we are, to share the love of Jesus with our family, as difficult and hard as that is. So as you sing this, I pray that this is your, your prayer today. The chorus is fairly simple, and uh, you'll, you'll pick this up really, really quick, but um, kind of goes like this. As for me and my house, as for me and my house, we will serve you, we will serve you. As for me and my house, there's no turning back now, we will serve you, yeah, we will serve you. 
try that again. As for me. And as for me and my house, as for me and my house, we will serve you. Yeah, we will serve you. And as for me and my house, there's no turning back now. We will serve you. Yeah, we will serve you. Amen. Hey, you guys did good on that. You did good. You did good. I have to tell you, that song's going to be stuck in your head for three weeks. I'm just telling you, so it's good. But hey, let's join together as we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. You may be seated. Thanks, team. Hey, uh, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And we're going to be digging into that passage a little bit more and a little bit of context. So you're going to need a Bible as we move into our message time in just a little bit. Hey, just want to say this. Uh, one way that we serve the Lord is by loving each other, all right? By loving each other. And uh, yesterday, uh, it was so awesome uh, to hear about how there were, were some older adults, all right? Uh, wiser adults. How about that? Wiser adults. Uh, they were young at heart, and they gathered here for a potluck. They had a great time. And, and sometimes love looks like just getting together and spending time together. So if you would like to learn more about young at heart, maybe you are young at heart, or maybe you'd like to serve those who are young at heart, go ahead and log on to our central hub, oslc.com. Click on this icon. You'll see it up there on the screen. It's a big old heart there, and you can learn more about that. Um, they meet about once a month, all right, once a month right here on site. So uh, it's a great opportunity just to serve and love one another, because that's what we're about, making disciples who love God, love people, and live like Jesus, all right? Cool. Right now, we're going to take a moment, gather our tithes, our offerings. You're going to see some boxes in the back as you leave. If you came with an offering, that's awesome, or you can give uh, the way my family does. We give online, oslc.com, or you can download the app and give anytime as you are led, all right? All right. Hey, as we move into the rest of our service, let's bow our heads, and we're going to pray. And give God a... Uh, the... I'm Dream Hop, the kids and women. Dream, hold on. All right, hold on, Dream. <laughs> Let's pray. Uh, God beats you out. Uh, <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for, for just an opportunity to come together and, and hear our prayer. To hear the cries of our heart, what's on our minds, uh, what we're carrying around, maybe as a burden, um, but most certainly as celebrations. And so thank you for uh, just an opportunity this summer to, for many of us uh, to cut, cut out, to uh, maybe rest and relax a little bit, enjoy uh, some warmer weather, some sun. Uh, we celebrate birthdays, anniversaries. Uh, so I look around even the room right now and think, think of folks, gosh, great test results uh, medically. And um, Lord, what you continue to do in the lives of ordinary people like us and those in our, in our world, thank you for, for being a God who's present. Uh, God, for those who are mourning, for those who are grieving, for those who are in need of healing, we place them into your hands today, asking that, that your healing power uh, in body, mind, and spirit, Lord, would wash over them, uh, would be present among them also. And for our world, um, wow, there's so many things that seem to be, be broken, hurtful uh, from from mass shootings to violence, um, Lord, to just, just things that we can't make sense of, uh, both locally, uh, nationally, and globally. Uh, Lord, we know that, that it doesn't need to make sense because, because you're, you're the one who holds the entire world in your hands. So today, we ask that you'd increase our faith, uh, that we would trust that you are still indeed in control and are the author and perfecter of all things, including our faith in you. So these things we ask in the mighty name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together collectively. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hey everyone, I'm Dream Hop, the kids and women's minister here at Our Savior. I want to welcome you to the kids' message. continue to learn how to let God's Spirit change us and the world around us through what we do, let's review the five fruit of the Spirit that we've already studied. Same with me. Love, joy, peace, patience, and kindness. Great job. Anyone remember which fruit comes next? It's goodness. To help us talk about showing God's goodness to others, I have a little game for us. 
I've brought in three items from home that I've wrapped up so you can't tell what they are. I'll hold them up and you try to guess what's inside and then we'll see if you're correct. Ready? Here's the first one. Tell the person next to you what you think will be inside and let's see if you're right. Dun, dun, dun. It's a teapot. Who knew? Wow. Who would have guessed? All right. Next item. The shape might give it away a little bit, but I'm not sure. Let's see what it is, everyone. It's a hammer. Oh, my goodness, but you didn't see that coming. All right, get ready for the final item. What could it be? It's shaped like lots of items. It's round. Let's see what it is. It's an orange. Oh, that could have been anything. Okay, let's be real. I did not do a very good job of wrapping these items to hide what was inside. Instead, I wrapped them with cellophane plastic wrap, which you can see right through. I did this to help us understand our Bible point for today. You see, the word cellophane has the Greek word fan in it right in the middle, which means to appear or to show. God shows us his goodness, and like this cellophane, our job is to show that goodness to others. Matthew 5, verses 14 through 16 says that we are the light of the world like a city on a hill that can't be hidden and we are to let our light shine so that others can see the good things we do and praise God. Our bottom line for today is show God's goodness to others. We can show others what God is like with our words and actions. We recognize how good God has been to us through his blessings, love, grace, and forgiveness and we want to show and share that goodness with others. We show God's light and point others to Jesus when we are kind, loving, forgiving, helpful, when we smile, and when we do what we can to make the world around us a better place. So let's show God's goodness to others today and every day. Let's pray. You can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for putting your light inside of us. Help us to show your goodness to others around us today. In Jesus' name, Amen. For more Bible fun, videos about today's lesson, and conversation starters for your family, head to the section called Kids Connect at Home in today's Kids News email. All right, kids, it's time to head to Kids Connect, so find your leaders in orange shirts at the back. Have a great week, everyone. morning. Today's reading is from Joshua 24, verses 11 through 15, found on page 198 in your pew Bible. And you went over to Jordan and came to Jericho, and the leaders of Jericho fought against you, and also the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Gershites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I gave them into your land. And I sent the hornet before you, which drove them out before you, the two kings of the Amorites. It was not by your sword or by your bow. I gave you a land on which you had not labored and cities that you had not built. And you dwell in them. You eat the fruit of vineyards and olive orchards that you did not plant. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and faithfulness. Put away the gods that your fathers served before the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And if it is an evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day with whom you will serve, whether the gods your father served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It's the word of the Lord. Did a pretty good job there with all those ites. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Again, if you came in a little late, I'm Pastor Tim, kicking off a new series called Building a Family. If you were with us last month, we, we went through a series of messages called Here's the Church, and we said the church is first and foremost, anyone remember, a family. And, and so the question is, so what does that family begin looking like? We talked about the church as the church the last couple of weeks, and we broke last week to celebrate VBS, and now we're, we're looking at what, what, what does this mean for us? Not just what does this mean, but now how is it done among us? And, and we're going to get some 
uh, pretty practical here over the next three weeks. And so um, here's the working definition of family that we're going to be, be working with over the next three weeks. Check it out. Let's read it together, all right? Family is imperfect people coming together to help each other to become more like Christ through submission and sacrificial service. Some pretty packed words in there. Imperfect people. How, how many of us are imperfect? Yeah, yeah. Um, if you're elbowing the person next to you and saying you're imperfect, all right, uh, the series is for you, all right? Uh, coming together <laughs> to become more like who? Jesus. Jesus. To become more like Christ, not like the best version of yourself or the best human being uh, that ever walked the earth but to be more specifically like Jesus Christ. And how? Through what are the two, two words or phrases? Let's read them together again. They're in yellow. Submission and sacrificial service. Now, nobody likes that word submission. Let's just be honest. Uh, we're going to dig into that a little bit here today. And then sacrificial service. We, we hear that in Joshua's declaration as he puts his flag in the sand. As for me and my house, we will what? serve the Lord. And so uh, that, that's where we're going today. Let's pray and we'll jump into it. All right, Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. We ask that this word, as challenging as it might be for us over these next three weeks, Lord, that we would be renewed, that we would be shaped, that we would be challenged by your word, by your Holy Spirit, that it would shape our hearts, that it would shape our lives, that, that the relationships, whether it's in our homes or in our workplaces or in our community, uh, Lord, that, that we would be part of a much bigger picture of how you are building us up as family. Indeed, that is your desire for us. And so guide us, lead us into your will and walk in your ways in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Here's the point for the day. The struggle is real. Why? Because, let's read it together, we're all a work in progress. We're all a work in progress. And, and Joshua knows this full well. If you have your Bibles open still, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just reiterate some of these Verses here, beginning in verse 11. Hey, remember your life and what's going on. You, you've gone through Egypt, and now you're going into the Jordan, and now you're here at Jericho, a very specific place. You and I, we are at a very specific place, and, and if you didn't know, we are in the county of Pierce. Anyone, anyone know that? Yeah, yeah, you're in a specific place, and that's the point that, that God always leads our families to specific places. You might think that, oh my goodness, uh, we're, we're here by happenstance, I, my, my job brought me here, or, or maybe I, I just grew up here and I don't know anything else, I don't know anything different. Uh, you're, you're at this specific place, you're at 45, 19, 112, for those of you who might not, not be good with directions, all right, and addresses, that is the physical location, so God has brought you here, <laughs> to this specific place. You see, God is always working at at placing you and me in specific places. For some of us as, as families, as relationships, uh, as extended families, uh, you might be very close geographically, you might be spread out geographically, but know this, that God has you exactly where he wants you. And sometimes that can be a struggle because we might not want to be <laughs> where we are. But here we are. And then he continues, the leaders of Jericho, they're fighting against you. <laughs> Doesn't that seem like the world today? It seems like sometimes, uh, even in our own homes, uh, the people we love the most, the people who love us the most, seem to be fighting against us. And also the Amorites, the Parasites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Gigerites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, the Termites, <laughs> all the ites. Let, let's just call it the world, all right? Not just the people within our, our, our families and our, and our extended families and our homes and our work, the people that know us and love us and the people that we know and love, but the people who we don't know, the people that, that seem to, to be always just in a different world than us. <laughs> they do. They're, they're also pressing in. It just seems to be a constant fight. Anyone else feel that today? Like, it just seems like the constant pressure, the constant burden, the constant fight, the constant noise. Uh, and check out what God does. And I gave them into your hand. 
Who gave them into your hand? God. Now, now we're not talking about violence and destruction necessarily, all right? Put that aside. God gave them all to you. God gave you his world. God gave you a family. God gave you the people who are disagreeable. God gave you those people who make it feel like everything is against you. And I think over the last couple years, and, and let's be honest, this has kind of been building um, we've kind of created a, a divide. Sometimes it's been in the church where here's the line and you're either for me or against me. But remember, who gave you the people around you? God did. I gave them to you. Here's the point. You can jot it down. Every family tells the story of God. Every family tells the story of God. So let's ask ourselves, when it comes to our families, and you can define that however you wish, just imperfect people coming together to become more like Jesus, all right? That could be anywhere. What is that shared story? Well, if you remember, it begins back in the garden. A garden a long, long time ago. Everything is good. Everything, everything in the world is good. And then there's human beings. And, and if you read the Genesis account, the very first book of the Bible, human beings are very good. And so th there's this distinction between humanity and creation. One is good, and the other is just really good, very good, because they're made in the image of God. They, they are God bearers. The people in our lives, they are God bearers. But then it doesn't take very long for, for the first sin to be recorded. And the first human beings, Adam and Eve, uh, that's, they're recorded. They, they say, wow, I'm not sure if I want to be part of this family that looks more and more like, like God and live in submission and service together. It, it actually looks, looks like independence from us and so we're going to go off and do our own thing and maybe God didn't tell us maybe God's holding out on us maybe he maybe we're missing something and so if you remember the, how the story goes the fruit was taken it was eaten it was shared and everything falls apart and then there's a curse there's a curse. Check out the curse. Genesis 3, 16, it says this. I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing, and in pain you will bring forth children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. Now, we could talk about that in the context of marriage and life, and, but, but here, here's what I want to take to us to take away the day. Uh, that word, desire for. Everybody say desire for. Desire for. It signals that there's going to be now an ongoing struggle, an ongoing struggle between people in marriages, in homes, with children, with grandchildren, in families, in churches, that there's going to be this inordinate desire to dominate, that in our loneliness, that, that we will have a tendency, it doesn't matter if you're a, a man or a woman, that, that we will have this inordinate desire for ravenous absorption to, to absorb or swallow each other up to fill our own emptiness, especially when we're lonely and isolated. And human beings, part of the curse is that we'll fail each other. We'll withdraw from each other. We'll be violent assaults on each other. And the person's desire will be to oppose one another, to, to assert dominance over each other, reversing God's plan that was good and very good for people like you and me. There'll also be this abandoning of, of God-given roles of leading and guarding and caring for each other that will become self-serving instead of others serving, replacing it with our own distorted desire to rule. Did I say the struggle is real? Indeed, it is. 
That's your story. That's my story. That's, that, that's how this story all began. But the story doesn't end there. The story plays out as God lays out a plan to, to get his creation back, to get you and me back to a place of, of sacrificial service, of, of mutual submission, of love. And, and yet God, he, he gives to each of us the invitation into that story as his loved and cherished chosen creation to live with him again. And you see, every family, every relationship tells this story of God. So let me ask, how, how does your life tell this story of God? Another thing that we take from, from these verses is this, that faithfulness is better than success. Let's say that together. Faithfulness is better than success. What do I mean by that? It, I, I, what I mean by that is is faithfulness to the story, embracing and engaging that story, being a part of that story in an intentional way, telling that story, sharing that story, being curious about that story. Growing in that story is better than getting it all right. So how do we become faithful? It's a great question. How do we become faithful in this? Uh, how, how do sinful, selfish human beings not fall into evil desires to control and manipulate? And here's the power. This is how. It's only through the Holy Spirit. It's only recognizing that the power for that to happen comes from outside of you and me. It, it, it's the power that does this, that daily makes the choice to smash idols and serve God only. To smash idols. You heard that in the passage. And to serve God only. Let's check it out. Verse 15. Now therefore, fear the Lord. That, that means honor, respect, submit, place yourself under the Lord. Know that, that God is God and you are not. And then to serve him, remember serve, it's that word to, to love, to worship, to work, to live. It, it's all encompassing in there. And, and the tense of, of this verb, the, the intent is not just a one-time action. It's not just checking the box. It's not just, hey, I did my good thing and, and I'm good. I'm good for another month. No, it's the continual act of serving. It's to serve and to continue to serve. And, and so this thrust, the, the submission and the sacrificial service is, is out of sincerity and in what? Faithfulness. To be true, to have integrity in that. To say, this is, this, is, this is who we are. This is who God has made us. This is the story that God has invited me into as a family. That, that I am not my own. Let me, let me just pause there. Um, I think one, this is just me. Okay, let, can I rant just for just a moment? All right. Um, growing up, growing up, it was all about your, your personal relationship with Jesus. Anyone hear, hear that phrase? Like, you have a personal relationship with Jesus. I'm not going to discount that. Like, yes, uh, you have a personal faith relationship in Jesus. But I think one of the, the greatest things that we have lost over a, really a generation and a half, maybe two generations uh, from my vantage point, is that we are not called into relationship to be on our own that we are actually called into a community of relationships. So some, some of you all know that, that I'm adopted. I, um, I, I was adopted when I was a baby. I didn't have a choice in the whole adoption process. My parents made that choice for me, and now I'm having to go through therapy and figure all that out, all right? But, uh, but no, I, I love my parents, and I, I love that I'm adopted, all right? Uh, but, but, but here's the thing, here's the thing. When I was adopted, I was not adopted as an individual only. I was adopted into a family. It wasn't that I, I somehow, I, I, I'm my own person, which on one hand I am. But that's like 5% of my life. The other 95% of my life are all the relationships that I am now a part of with, with parents, with grandparents, with aunts, with uncles, with children, with grandchildren, with nieces, with nephews, with neighbors, with friends, with coworkers. I mean, we can just keep on counting them off. You see, I think one of the, the, the most damaging things over the last 
couple generations is that we have drank the Kool-Aid to think that being a part of church and being a Christian is just me and Jesus time. And as long as I have me and Jesus, we're good. False. Yes, it's you and Jesus, but it's also just as much, if not more important, that you are part of a much larger family of Christians, that we love and serve each other, we have each other's backs, that we don't devour each other, we don't dominate each other like that first sin, but we sacrificially serve, we submit to one another. Okay, rant over, all right? But it's that daily struggle, right, to smash the idols, and also, not just smash the idols, but to serve God only. Let's continue here. Verse 15. If it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day then who you will serve, whether it's the gods of your father served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in the land that you dwell. But as far as me and my house, we will what? Serve the Lord. What are we talking about here? Um, if you drill down here, there's really three groups of, of gods within these, these places, the Amorites, the Jebusites, the, the Perizzites, um, and all these other gods. All right, uh, there's the inherited gods. These are the gods that are, that are all about power, and, and they confuse power with authority. You can think of the Greek gods, all right? They're, they're inherited. They're passed down from generation to generation. It might be the god of money for some of us today that we have an inheritance, a financial inheritance, and, and, and everything in life revolves around that for our family to, to guard the inheritance. And with that comes power. We must not confuse power with authority when it comes to our inherited gods. There's generational gods What's that? Uh, this is the manipulation. Um, there, there's a generational uh, aspect of sin that's passed down, like, hey, my, 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 my grandparents were manipulative, my, my parents were manipulative, I might be manipulative, and I'm, now I'm seeing that in my kids. And, and, and yeah, that's something that we need to deal with as a family, not individually, but as a family. These are the generational gods that we can struggle with. And, and then there's cultural gods. Uh, we're talking about sex. We're talking about, about the, the extremes of pleasure and uh, finding that our ultimate fulfillment is in being happy and having pleasure. And, and really, it's about domination and control. It's not about service and, and sacrifice. And, and so we have these, these cultural gods that, that kind of ebb and flow and go with wherever the wind goes. But notice how Joshua is encouraging people in this very, uh, we'll say, polytheistic uh, world with so many voices going around. And notice how he's encouraging God's people to be faithful. Uh, it's not trying harder. It's not doing better. It's not forcing your kids to do something. It's not telling your parents off. It's not disciplining yourself more and more and more and kind of that, um, you know, self-loathing. No. Fear the Lord. It's that submission. I, remember, God is God, I am not. So I'm gonna surrender my will to his and then serving him with all faithfulness. Serving, loving, working, worshiping, playing life with integrity, remembering who we are, remembering our story, remembering that, that we're part of that story, that our lives tell that story of God's redemption and that apart from God, we can do nothing. That apart from the Holy Spirit, we need that Holy Spirit power in order to do any of this. And, and while there might be some good human principles in here, and they're great for family, they're great for relationships, be kind, love one another, the golden rule, we should be tolerant and, and accepting. Yes, 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 and yes. But without the power of God, it's impossible. Because we'll always go back to the sin. We'll always go back to the curse. We'll always go back to Eden. And so the question maybe becomes, how do we get that Holy Spirit? How do we, how are we filled with that Holy Spirit every day to smash those idols and to serve the Lord alone? 
I was thinking about this earlier this week, and <clears throat> you know, one, one, of the, one of the ways that we can surrender ourselves and to serve the Lord in that sacrificial sort of way is to remember where we're all heading. We're either headed down into the ground, into a grave, or we're gonna be living forever. Those are really the only two options if you think about it, right? You're gonna be, be down in a grave because, I mean, death and taxes is the only two things for sure in this life. Or by faith, we're gonna live forever. That's the promise of God, by faith. And Joshua, he, 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 he sees this, he knows this, and, and he says that, that, hey, you can look at all these other gods, but think about this, think about this. Where are they gonna leave you? Are they gonna take and take and take? Are they, are they gonna demand more and more and more? Are, are, are they gonna just make you happy for today and then, then someday like everything will be over and, and it'll be the end? Or are they gonna make you holy? Are they gonna set you apart? Are they gonna make you more like Jesus? And yeah, all the good human stuff, but ultimately the eternal stuff as well. As for me and my house, Joshua declares, what will he do? He will serve the Lord. You see, all, all of our relationships, and specifically our, our family relationships, we, we need to shift from a, from, a, from a modern consumeristic mindset that everything exists for my, my pleasure and my joy and my happiness to a ministry mindset. Over the years, I've, I've shared something like this for families uh, who are, find themselves maybe frustrated with, with a loved one, and uh, they say things like this, uh, if I continue to spend time with them, or man, if I, can, if I need to spend more than a week with them, if I, if I don't set the boundaries and just distance myself, like we don't talk about Bruno, all right, we just, mm. they're just gonna do A, B, and C, um, and I would, I would say this, never allow that in your family. Never allow that in your relationships. Never become satisfied with anything less than what you're willing to make others become more like Jesus. Through sacrificial service, through mutual submission. And it's okay for you not to do all the sacrificing. In fact, uh, that, that would be to promote a selfish relationship. <laughs> because that's not the ministry mindset. It, it, it's so incredibly selfish to let somebody else live a selfish life. Think about that. It's so incredibly selfish to let somebody else live a selfish life, especially if you know they don't have the relationship with Jesus. If they're not part of a greater family. Ma Pastor Matt's gonna talk about that more next week. Rather, the ministry mindset is that how, how do you lovingly confront them? How do you have a, have, a, have a conversation with every ounce of love, with every ounce of sensitivity that you have, trusting that the Holy Spirit is, is helping you to say it's not okay for you to be selfish. And if I'm selfish, Lord, rid me of that selfishness. I can imagine some of you are there right now because... I can tell you, I'm not gonna go into detail, but I, I'm, I'm there too with some of my relationships. <sighs> Trying to figure it out. The struggle is real. But God is always at work on us. We're a work in progress. I love what Chip Ingram says. He puts it like this. Uh, Serving or love is giving the other person what they need the most when they don't deserve it because God has done that for me. That's what it means to walk in love. Walking in love isn't that you have ooey-gooey feelings. God doesn't give infatuation or love. It's not. It's infatuation. Walk in love. Walking in love is a choice. Walking in love is doing what you don't want to do because it's the right thing to do. There's that integrity. Because you're committed to that person. Because you're committed to the family. Because that's what Jesus has done for you, and you don't have to be, you don't have to have all the resources, but you choose to do it anyway. With Joshua, hey, for me and my house, we're going to love and serve the Lord together in this family, in this set of relationships, and do it anyway, and at the moment you take the step, boom. What happens? Let's read it together. God gives the strength. 
Maybe, maybe it's less of a, a trust that God loves me, and maybe it's, it's asking God, God, increase my trust in you so that I can have the strength to serve and to love those around me. We call this, we call this gospel reenactment. Everybody say that term. Gospel reenactment. One more time. Gospel reenactment. Um, it means that, that each of us, we take on the role of Jesus. If you're a follower of Jesus, then, then you take on that role with the power that, that Jesus has. Because recognize that Jesus, he is the loving servant. This is why Joshua said that. He knew that God is the loving servant. God is the one who gave the promise. God is the one who put us together. God is the one. God is the one who is moving and living and active. It's his story that we are invited into. That Jesus, he's also a son. He's submissive to the Father for the sake of our salvation. He models that. And, and although people may confuse or misuse or abuse or, 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 or what it means to, to take the lead or to submit the real teachings of Jesus, search the scriptures because the meaning is there. Look at what Jesus has done for us where he has placed us, what he has given to us. Because our families, our relationships, they reveal this character of God in all that we do. I wanna end with this quote, all right? Um, it, it's specifically about marriage, all right? So uh, it was originally in the context of marriage, but I, I'm gonna translate it afterwards, all right? It says this, marriage is successful when two spouses care for one another and stay committed to each other through the intense heat of the battle. When they hurt, they know who will listen and care. When they rejoice, they will have someone to laugh with. They are indeed what they call intimate allies in the battle against the chaos of the world. Mm. Let me translate that in a general sense for all of us. Whether it's in your marriage, your relationship with your kids or grandkids, extended family, neighborhood family, or church family, it is only possible to be faithful to fear the Lord and serve him alone when people care for one another, stay committed to each other through the intense heat of battle. When they hurt, they know who will listen and care. When they rejoice, they will have someone to laugh with. They are indeed intimate allies in the battle against the chaos of the world. Let me ask, is that the type of family you'd like? Is that the type of family we'd want to strive for? I know it is for me. Hmm. Family, we're, we're the imperfect people. We're not gonna get it right 100% of the time, but God doesn't demand perfection. He invites us to be faithful. And it's imperfect people coming together to help each other become more like Christ through mutual submission and sacrificial service. We tell the story of God in our work, in our life, in our love, in, our, in the places where we live, work, and play. And so Joshua's encouragement to us as we continue to build the family, however that looks like for you, is to choose the day which God you're gonna serve. My prayer is that we would all reenact the gospel, the gospel of God, the good news of God, and say, but for me and my house, what will we do? We will serve the Lord. Let's stand. As we close out today, um, Let's just bow our heads and we say, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, um, as we continue through this series, uh, Lord, teach us what it means to, to be submissive, uh, not, not in a, an abusive way, but uh, to submit to you, to say that, that there's things that, that I certainly don't understand, that I'm uncertain about, but God, you are God and I am not. And so spark that curiosity. May, may I have the hunger to grow in your word because the, the more I grow in submission to you and your ways and your work and your story in my life, the more clear that story becomes in my home, in my workplace, in the world. Thank you for giving me all things for the people around me, uh, even those that, that I don't necessarily agree with. And, um, that might even be disagreeable and just like Joshua, God, um, may we love them, 
when we grow in our respect of them, and as we look around us at all these other ways, Lord, may we say with Joshua, uh, may our stories echo your story, God, and for as me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So go with us this week as we do this, as we figure it out, as we struggle through it. We ask that you'd bless us and keep us now, that you make your face shine on us, be gracious to us, look upon us with your favor, and indeed give us your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye.